Hello, my name is Kristen. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to do a drawing and watercolor lesson with you on um, peacock feathers. So this is an example that I did actually yesterday while well, I meant to be filming but I just uh, didn't press record. So I wanted to show you what I have um, for materials. I have some watercolor paper, which is just paper that I had around. This is cut to about seven inches by 13 inches. Again, that's kind of what I had and what worked for me. I have a few peacock feathers to work from. I'm gonna choose one of them to paint. I have some Windsor Newton Cotman watercolors, which I like to use for teaching. <coughs> I have a jar of water, a pencil, some scrap watercolor paper for mixing color swatches on, um, a few brushes, a towel, um, and I don't know if I'm going to use them, but I also have an eraser and a pack of colored pencils. Today we're going to do um, an exercise with watercolor, uh, looking at these peacock feathers. I really love using peacock feathers as a subject because they're flat and have a relatively simple shape, but they have a lot going on um, color-wise. So when I look at the feather, I see that the colors go from um, kind of dark blue to light blue um, to green and brown, and there's a lot of iridescence um, where when the light hits it or you move the feather and the light moves, you get different kind of shades of color um, and they're almost kind of sparkly. Another cool thing about working from feathers is that each one is a little bit different. So you can see with these two feathers or three feathers that I have, each one is shaped a little bit differently and the colors are a little bit different as well. Um, for this illustration or sketch, I'm not too worried about making sure my peacock feather is 100% the same as the one that I pick, but I'm trying to get the essence of, of what a peacock feather is like and to capture some of the colors that I see there. When I draw something out, the first thing I want to do is figure out how big I want it to be on my paper. So I like to work um, when I can at a 100% scale, so making my illustration or sketch the same size as the actual object that I'm drawing from. With this feather, the piece of paper I have is about the same size, but I'm actually going to move the feather down a little bit so that it goes off the bottom and so that I have a little bit more space at the top here. So I'm just gonna start by making a couple marks on my paper, showing how big the feather should be, okay? The next thing that I do is look at my subject, the feather, and try and figure out what the main shapes are. When I'm sketching something out, I like to work from the big shapes to the small shapes. So I don't start with the details, um, but think about kind of the whole structure of the feather. When I look at this feather, the main shapes that I see are this kind of oval circle where the eye pattern is, and then also this part that comes down um, the shaft of the feather. So I'm gonna start by drawing those two things in. Um, I can use my feather to measure and get an idea kind of where things are. So this is kind of the top of where the shaft goes. And then I'm gonna look really carefully at my feather and see, is this just, it's not just a straight line. It has a little bit of a curve to it. So I'm just gonna draw that lightly. I usually start my first sketch um, drawing pretty light and then I can come back and fix it later if I need to. I don't know, that looks pretty straight. I don't know if I captured that curve. Might add a little bit more there. That's better. And then because I drew softly, I can erase that first line. Next, I'm gonna work on this part in here, the middle part of the feather. Um, I might use my pencil and measure how big that is. So this is very approximate, but just gives me a bit of an idea 
um, that's actually, if this is gonna be the top of my feather or around the top of my feather, it's lower down. So I want it to be in there. And then how wide it is. It's about that wide. Okay. And then I'm just going to draw in this shape. So that's the main part of this eye pattern. Um, now I'm gonna draw the rest of the feather. So that's mainly um, this part that comes down and it has a little bit of thickness to it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of thickness to it. So it's not just one line. Again, it comes all the way off the page. And now we're gonna draw um, these parts that come off the feather, the fronds of the feather. So I think I'm gonna start in the middle at the top. In here, there's kind of this space. They come off like that kind of. And I don't need to draw every single one right now, but just to get the feel of how they're shaped and um, where they go. Sometimes they overlap like that. Sometimes they come. Trying to pay attention to how these guys look down here. And it's not something that you have to get perfectly perfect because, you know, every time I move the feather, those things move a little bit. Um, so, again, we're just trying to get the idea of what a peacock feather is like. <clears throat> One thing I'm looking at is um, how they intersect off this part of the shaft. So if you can see, they aren't um, perfectly or opposite. They alternate a little bit. And then there's actually more on this side than on this side. We'll put in few more up here. They kind of come up like that. All right, then I can erase any spare marks that I don't want. And just look at the whole thing again and see where I, I need a little bit more information. But I think that looks pretty good for now. Now that we've finished our drawing, the next step is to start watercolor painting, which we'll do in the next video.